Hi and welcome to Built It Blackjack. Um, I was going to talk about wiring, um, but where do you start? There's questions. So there's questions of everything. There's the classic questions. You've got <clears throat> why, when, where, what, and how. Well, why would you want to wire a motorcycle? A couple of reasons. You've just built it. It's got no wiring. Um, that would be a one, a good one. Second one is you're in the middle of repairing an electrical fault for the 57th time in six weeks. That's probably a good indication that it could do with a rewire. <clears throat> when do you do it? Well, that's an interesting thing. When? As I said, you've got 50, if you've made 57 attempts to repair already, then it's time to rewire it. If you're putting a bike together, time to start thinking about the wiring is when you're working on it because Otherwise, you end up doing that thing you might have seen on Discovery Channel where people get their frame powder coated and everything else and then start drilling holes in it to run wiring through the frame. Uh, yeah, no, not a good idea. Where? Okay, the reason where is on the list is that a lot of times when I'm doing wiring for somebody, I find there's no other main the regulator, there's nowhere to make the battery, there's nowhere to make it, and it's, you, you need, all this stuff has to go somewhere, so at some point, if you're rewiring an existing motorcycle, it's not a problem because all that stuff's already got home, but if you're building a motorbike, think about where all that stuff is going to go. Um, what? What does all that stuff do? Uh, good question, but I can't really get into that. I don't want to get into that right now. It, most of it works by coils of wire um, and magnetic fields. Some of the more electronic -y bits are electronic-y. Um, you know, all you need to know is what inputs it, where the inputs are, where the outputs go. Um, stuff like relays, solenoids, star motors, ignition coils, they'll work in much the same way. Um, we'll get into that another time. But for now, I want to get how you wire a motorcycle. In other words, how am I going to do this? Okay, wire. Um, you hear a lot of reuse the old loom, um, use some old wire, do this, do that, do the other. Um, no, don't. This is a piece of 25 amp cable that I bought in a metal accessory shop many years ago. And this is another piece of 25 amp cable I bought quite recently. Um, most, I've tried taking a picture of this and it's not really happening, but most of the difference in those is the thickness of the insulation. And insulation is a, is a problem. Um, what goes wrong with wires? That water can creep up the insulation, so if you've got a 30 year old cable, um, how do you know it's fine all the way along? Um, they can be pinched somewhere, they can be trapped somewhere, they can be kinked and straightened, kinked and straightened, they can be about to break. Just don't use it because you're potentially wiring in problems. This new stuff, thin wall, it's great. It, it, it's relatively cheap. The place I get mine from, um, there's the link down there. I think they're, it's literally pence a meter and you can get it in 14, well, you can get it in loads of different colors if you start having traces in it. But there's 14, 15 basic colors that comes in. So. But, but you don't need this, you need this for the most of wire in a motorcycle, which is only a couple of million diameter. Um, and it carries 16 and a half amps. Now, 16 and a half amps is a lot. Uh, headlight bulb, 55 watts, just call it 60 watts. Volts times amps gives you watts. Uh, it's 12 volts, 5 times 5 is 60, so it's drawing 5 amps. This is a 16 and a half amp cable. Um, and that's good, that, that'll do for most things. I can use a bit of this to go from the main fuse up to the switch gear, and then most of the rest of it's done now. So that's the wire out of the way. Thin wall, 16 and a half, occasionally get 25 amp. Um, and there you have it. Next problem we've got is connectors. A lot of people like to use these, the famous red or blue crimp connector, the correct expression 
for that. It's not a crimp connector. That is an electrical fault waiting to happen. The weather sealing on them is appalling. They're made to make the job quicker and easier. Now that might sound really appealing, but they're not made to make it better. They're made to make it quicker and easier. These, on the other hand, are what's known as uninsulated connectors. Um, uninsulated makes them sound cheap and nasty, but the point about them is the way the ceiling's much better on them. There's a two stage crimping operation, so you, you've got a, a connection to the conductor and then another connect, another conductor. Another crimp that supports the insulation, and then the whole thing's covered in a sleeve, which, when the two hands are fit together, makes a somewhat sensible weather seal. Um, using these, a bit of an art form. There's, I keep two pliers doing this, and I keep <coughs> some wire strippers because it gives you a nice, a nice consistent strip on the end of the wire, like that, and it pays to put the sleeve on before the terminal, you'll get away with it at one end, but you won't get away with it at the second end. Um, take your connector and then position the cut on the insulator in line with the first set of wings, the gap between the first and second set of wings. Um, now for these female ones, I can get away with using these thicker, but I need to check that it's properly located in the jaws, and that my insulation is in the right place before I give it a squeeze. And that has come down really rather nicely. And it ain't coming off. What tends to happen is that the second set of ears occasionally spread a little when you do that, so you need to tweak them in a bit. Again, locate it all properly in the jaws. Another squeeze. And that's got hold of the insulation. And then when I slide the rubber, it's not rubber, plastic sleeve over it. it, it sort of clicks into place and it gives me a reasonably well protected connector. Goes together, comes apart, goes together, comes apart. I don't know if you've tried doing that with blue crimp on ones, but they don't take much of that. So these, these are fairly reliable. I mean, okay, fair enough, you can get problems with them, but um, think about how old the bike was when you were getting problems with them. Because I've got 1981 Kawasaki 650 over there, and most of it still works, and it uses this type of connector. It doesn't use that type of cable. So the cable I'm using here is one and a half, two times the size of the original the load carrying capacity of the original cable. Um, and I'm using the same connectors which have proven to be reliable over periods of 20, 25 years. I think, you know, it's not gonna last forever. So the 20, 25 years is probably good enough. So that's the wire dealt with, that's the connectors dealt with. The next thing is, what are we gonna wrap it all up in? Now at this point, everybody goes, oh, it shrink. No, if you put, six, seven wires through some heat shrink and shrink it, what you end up with is a cosh. It's great for hitting people over the head, but it's not much good for a flexible um, wiring thing. There's a couple of options. My favorite is this stuff, which is looming tape. It's um, basically PVC tape. <clears throat> you wrap it around the loom, trap the ends, you can use a little bit of heat shrink for that if you like. Um, and it moves with it moves with the cable. So there's a reason that if you think about it, it's quite labour intensive to wrap that around a loom. And there must be a reason 
that looms are wrapped in tape rather than just run through plastics leaving it you can buy in lengths. Um, so that's my preferred thing. If it's somewhere it's exposed to a lot of elements, then I use this, which is a PVC tube. Um, up underneath mud guards, it's not going to be moving. It's going to get stuff thrown out all the time. So piece of PVC sleeving up under the mud guard works wonders. Keeps the keeps the cables out of trouble. Keeps the cables out of trouble and protects them from the weather. Um, then you've got this stuff, which is nylon braided. Um, it's quite horrible, really. It will wear paint away, it'll even wear aluminium away, um, and it leaks. So, the only thing it's got in its favour is it looks quite nice. So, I would I try and avoid using that anywhere other than perhaps up to the handlebar controls on something where I mean that's a bit of a cop right? because you can run the wires through the bars um, you can always run the PVC tube <laughs> up the middle of it like that get a look and it's um, far more weatherproof the end of this is always going to be trapping with something and again that's going to be heat shrink um, so that's the three major components of constructing a wire link. You need connectors. We're going to use uninsulated terminals because they're 20 years sort of reliable. They're relatively cheap and they're quite compact. Cable, um, brand new cable in different colors. Don't do it all in red because doing it all in red is a wiring fault. And we're going to wrap the loom for the most part in looming tape, um, especially the bits where you can't see it. Keeps it all tidy, everything's great. Um, if we, the bits that you can see, perhaps we're going to use some of that. Uh, this stuff we're going to avoid because it holds water, it, 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 it's, it's a pain, don't like it. Um, and it, yes, I know it looks prettier, but it's easier just to hide the wiring. So that's my thoughts on all that. Um, so that's how you make a wiring loom. The next thing is, what does all this stuff do? So I'm, in the next one, I'll have a look at um, some watts of the, how the wiring, st the stuff you're wiring together works, because having a little understanding of what it's doing helps. Uh, essential. But then after that, at some point, we'll wire something up. Um, it might have to be a quad, but we'll see. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I don't know well, if you didn't find it interesting, I hope you found it useful. Uh, there's a little board up there with the current number of subscribers on it. Um, if you would like me to change the number on your account, feel free to subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thanks a lot, but have you hit the notification so you get to hear when I'm bringing another video in? And if you can't be bothered with either of those, then just click the like because those help too. Um, that's it really. See you in the next one. Take care. Thanks for watching.